Hey y'all, I hope y'all are ready to make these creamy chicken stuffed bell peppers tonight. I'm going to go ahead and heat up the oven and start some prep while y'all are coming on in. Right, you want to set your oven to 350 degrees. Now, the creamy chicken stuffed bell peppers. Everybody is going on a foodie break in January, right? after you've eaten all the good food for the holidays. So that's why he wanted to make something that was a little bit on the lighter side, but still good. Now what you can do is serve these with a side of rice, just so you can have a little bit more of a filling meal. So I've already prepped some of the bell peppers. All you do is cut off the top of the bell pepper and take out the core, clean it out real well. You can just rinse it and then you're good to go. And I've already prepped the chicken. We're using a pre-cooked chicken. I get my chicken from Walmart, the rotisserie style traditional chicken. It's the best pre-cooked chicken I've ever had. So what I did, white meat and dark meat. I took all of the chicken off of the bone and just shredded it with my hands. And for the big pieces that I couldn't shred down, it's fine. I went ahead and used two forks and then shredded the rest. All right. So we're going to go ahead and finish the bell peppers. We're going to make a total of four. I've already done two, so I'll go ahead and do the other two. I hope y'all can see. Let me bring it down just a little bit more. Okay. There we go. So you just slice off the top of the bell pepper. And then you'll see there's a core here. All I'm going to do is cut on the sides. And it disconnects pretty easy. And all you do is pull that core out. And you can see you have your little stuffed bell pepper ready. I'm going to rinse this out, but I'm going to go ahead and do the other one first. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Of course, you want to make sure you're using a real sharp knife so you don't have to struggle with it. And it'll pop right out. There you go. Same thing with that one. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse these and set them to the side. And we're going to cut up our onion and our bell pepper so we can saute that. Now this is a super simple recipe, in my opinion anyway, because all you have to do is prep everything and put it in the oven. That's what I love, something that I can prep real quick, pop in the oven, don't have to worry about it. These take about 40 minutes to cook. I can go cook, do something else, take care of some business, and then come back and dinner is ready. Cut the bell pepper first. You just need to dice it. It doesn't have to be super small. You need bell pepper and onion. Now after we get all of this diced up, we'll go over to the stove and get started. The longest part for this recipe is Shredding the chicken and prepping the vegetables. But the rest is real quick. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little bit more bell pepper than that. 
just because I like a lot of bell pepper. Even though <laughs> we're stuffing it in the bell pepper, I like the seasoning. Because, too, I am a seasoning queen. But in this recipe, I did not add any seasoning. Now, I am going to taste and make sure before I stuff these bell peppers. But since we're using chicken broth, you don't really need any other seasoning. And the rotisserie chicken that's pre-made, it has a good amount of seasoning in it too. So you won't like any flavor. Alright, and I'm using a yellow onion. For some reason, I always like to rinse my onions. I'm no wolf game pup with the knife work, but I get it done. <laughs> Probably why these onions were so cheap. This one too. Okay, we're going to try again. I'm sorry, y'all. I just got these onions the other day. But you never know, right? These are good. This one's good. Always buy extra because what can go wrong will go wrong with cooking, right? So always buy extra. That's good. There we go. <laughs> we got it going. That's what matters. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and heat up some olive oil in the skillet. And we're going to go ahead and saute these vegetables. I'm going to get the skillet ready. And move y'all over there to make sure y'all can see. y'all down by the way i'm sorry i don't think i introduced myself my name is ashley i'm with cultural creations and what we do we're southern based all of our recipes are mainly southern based but we create a variety of recipes so all right 
on to the chicken. I'm going to go ahead and add some olive oil. I have my skillet on about four. That shouldn't be too high. I'm going to let it heat up for just a few minutes. And then go ahead and put the onion and the bell pepper in here. I'm going to go ahead and add them in here. My oil is not piping hot. It's not hot at all, actually. But that's okay. It'll start to sizzle. And while that's getting ready, we're going to go ahead and work on these peppers. I forgot. We need to... Um, we need to put some olive oil on them. And then we also need to season them with some onion powder. All right, now I can see me well now. So this is just a preference. If you don't want to do this step, that's fine. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. I like it because I think it makes the um, the bell peppers a little crisper. Because you all know as the bell peppers cook, they're going to soften up. And I don't like them to be too soft. Just put some olive oil on your fingers and rub it like so. You can use cooking spray. They make olive oil cooking spray. It works just the same. I keep wanting to pour the oil right on the pepper and that's not going to work. Let me wash my hands and we're going to do the onion powder. Alright. My onion powder has a big spout on it, so I'm going to be really careful. Come on and just lightly go over the bell peppers. And then I'm going to put them in this foil pan that they came out of. I like to put them in this foil pan because they can kind of support each other. Alright, then I'm going to go check on the onion and the bell pepper that are sauteing. There we go. Let me move y'all back down. Okay. Just stir them around. You don't have to constantly stir them. I cook them until they start to uh, turn brown and soften. And then we'll start adding the um, cream of chicken and the cream of mushroom. And all our other ingredients. over here already starting to brown. Let me chop up some of these big pieces. So 
right. Let those go for a few more minutes and they should be ready. get a chance to make this recipe I like we have a recipe on our blog it's called um, chicken tetrazzini it's similar to that recipe it was so popular on Instagram Facebook the blog everywhere so this is kind of like a spin-off of the recipe since that one was so popular it's really easy as well the way you prepare it in the pan is similar you're just gonna add spaghetti noodles as well so let's check on this I like my veggies to definitely get brown because I feel like that's when they have the most flavor. I think when they're in the raw form, they're okay. They give you the fresh taste, but when they're actually brown, it's a flavor like no other. Go a little bit more. Okay, and like I said when we started, the chicken is pre-cooked chicken. So why did I choose pre-cooked chicken? Because like a lot of people, I work a nine to five and I don't have time to do everything all the time. So and I love the Walmart rotisserie chicken. It's not sponsored. I just really love it. So it makes my life easier. Sometimes I have the chicken with a side of veggies. And so I really came to love it and said, well, let me try to play around with it to make some other recipes. So something like this, that chicken is so full of flavor, like I told y'all before, all you have to do is shred it. You don't have to worry about dealing with cooking the chicken, baking it, rotisserie, cleaning it up, nothing. It's already seasoned, ready to go. Make your life a lot easier during the week. Check on the vegetables. Almost there, y'all. You can also pre-shred the chicken the day before. The shortcut to your veggies. Pre-chop your veggies the day before. Put them in an airtight container. And they'll be good to go the next day. For y'all who follow me on stories, I'm always on Instagram stories and I also share them to Facebook. I cook a lot, right? A lot of the issue is like I come in from work pretty early and then I don't want to go back out and get food. And then also I don't want to, I like my food fresh. So let's say I can pick up food on the way home from work, but I want my food fresh. I may not be ready to eat right then. So I usually have something that I put on, something like these peppers. I can put them on, put them in the oven. Let them do their thing. And I'm going to make my rice in the Instant Pot. And dinner is ready. I got the Instant Pot for Christmas. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Mexican rice. A lot of stuff. A lot easier. So I'm going to bring y'all some Instant Pot recipes too. Let's check on this again. Alright. Let me show y'all. They're really starting to turn brown now. Y'all can see how brown they are right now. They're not burnt, but they are brown. 
So we're going to go ahead and add in our cream of mushroom soup and our cream of chicken. the whole cream of cream, cream of chicken. I like enough for the flavor. Let's see. Mix that in real well. You want it to be well blended. I'm going to add a little bit more cream of chicken. So I used about half a can so far. And a whole can of cream of mushroom soup. All right, we're gonna let that heat together and then we're gonna go ahead and add the chicken. Mix that together real well. And it definitely will get thick. That's why we're adding the um, the chicken stock. You can add chicken broth, but I have chicken stock, so that's what I'm going to use. It's about the same. I didn't realize that at first, but I actually read the ingredients on the back of the carton. And it is about the same, about the same thing. All right. I like to add a little bit at a time so I don't add too much. of chicken stock by the way I was wasting so much uh, chicken broth and chicken stock buying cans I love these because you can just put the top back on them and uh, put them up until you need them again all right I'm gonna go ahead and add the cheese we're going to use sharp cheddar cheese for the inside of the peppers. We're going to use a different cheese for the tops because that's just how I, that's how I like it. I think sharp cheddar cheese just gives the food that extra boost of flavor that you just can't get from like a mild cheese. You can add as much or as less cheese as you want. You just kind of want it to be an even balance 
with the other ingredients in the dish. And I don't know if you can see that, but the cheese is kind of evenly dispersed throughout the um, rest of the ingredients. So I think that's going to be enough. But before I transfer the chicken mixture into the peppers, I'm going to taste and see first. Just to make sure. So tip two, when you're shredding your chicken, don't shred it too fine. Because if you can see, it gets a little, I don't know if you would call it mushy. But I found if you shred your chicken too fine, you can't barely taste it. And that's not my thing. It may be some of y'all's to do what works for you, but that's not my thing. I'm going to add a little bit more stock. Because as this, um, as it continues to simmer, it'll thicken a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and taste it now. That's a really good flavor already. I'm going to let it simmer for a few minutes and then we're going to go ahead and stuff our peppers. The last thing we'll add is our pimentos. I already bought them in the can, diced, ready to go. Y'all, some of y'all may not like pimentos. And I completely understand because... It's kind of like something you would think, like pimento cheese or something like that. But, all they are, let me turn y'all around. All pimentos are red bell peppers. That's it. I really think they add a good flavor to the mixture. Let's see. Is it saying on here? Pimentos, water, and citric acid. And that's it. Really good flavor. You wanna, you don't wanna skip these. Right, so let me get a spoon, and we're gonna add a little bit of those. Take y'all back down. So y'all can see, that's why I added so much stock, because it's thickening up again since it's getting hot, hotter. I'm going to taste again, just in case the pimentos change the flavor. Just turn this down some. Alright. I don't know if y'all can see, but the pimentos are not evenly dispersed. So I feel like there's not enough, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little more. They're so small, so it's not that much. Alright, let's mix that in. That's much better. I don't want to get crazy with the pimento, so I'm not going to add too much more. I'm not going to add any more. Give it another taste. That's good. And it doesn't need anything else. So I'm going to move y'all back over here. I'm going to bring the pan so we can stuff these bell peppers. Move 
some of this stuff out the way. I appreciate y'all joining me tonight. See if this spoon is going to work. Let me situate y'all so y'all can see. All right. Let's put it right into your bell pepper. Leave a little room at the top. for your extra cheese. pick a pretty good sized bell pepper and one that was pretty even at the bottom so they wouldn't rock too much in the pan. Makes it so much easier. Okay. I'm going to even the seasoning, the um, ingredients out. Some of them aren't as full as the others. Tent at showing you what it looks like. There we go. You can add a little bit more. Let's get a spoon. Smaller spoon. To make sure you're not overdoing it, just kind of move your spoon back and forth to make sure everything gets in the corners to see how much space you have to, have to add more. Okay. Because for example with this one, there's some space here. So you have a little bit more room to add more of your mixture. Let's get our cheddar jack cheese. I like to put cheddar jack on top because it's a little bit milder. I think it's just a good balance of flavor. Just use your favorite. You don't have to put too much, just enough to make sure it's evenly covered on the top. But in the South, in Texas, we love our cheese. Alright. Any more here? You want to make sure it's covered. Because I don't know if you all were able to see the Facebook post that I made with the bell peppers. But, um, they had that good film of cheese on the top and that's because they were completely covered on the top with cheese and then if you want to get that little bit of scorch like when you're making macaroni when you get done 
and you take your foil off, turn the broiler on. So let me show y'all before we cover them. We put them in the oven. Oh, don't try to get away. Hope y'all can see that. Let me pick one up. There we go. All right. So what you're gonna do is form a tent with your foil. So you're not laying your foil right on your, uh, your peppers. And messing up all that cheese goodness, right? Form it like so. You may have to use more than one piece. And I'm just tucking it and crimping it. I'm going to use one more piece so I make sure that I'm not smothering the bell peppers with the foil. You didn't have to work with a little bit. Y'all see it's giving me time a little bit. But once you got it on, it's good. Alright, that's good. And we're ready for the oven. I'm going to put these in the oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. I'll check on them halfway through. I always check on everything halfway through unless it's a cake. And make sure everything's good with them and let them finish. And in the, in the end, like I said, if the cheese is not how I want it on top, I'll turn the broiler on so I can get that nice, good looking crisp on top. y'all around that's it y'all have my timer set to 40 minutes so i can go and do whatever i need to do my little timer in my oven is real loud so no matter where i am in the house i can definitely hear it and i'm gonna take them out and have my rice and have my dinner and that's gonna be it i hope y'all enjoyed this recipe if you want the link to the recipe it's on the facebook page it's the top link and i'll also post it in the comments thank y'all for coming